How's everybody today? I love this day. It's been a tradition and a ritual, and it's a well-oiled machine, so uh, we're glad you're here. You're going to hear from consultants, some professors, and teachers, and, and we're going to dig into some Pembroke publications today, and, and it's an active and interactive uh, morning while you um, get to talk to some neighbors and also dig into some books. Just to see who's in the room here, put up your hand if this is your first time here. Wow, the numbers are growing for first time here. Put up your hand if you've been in this room before for a Pembroke event. The old people, where are the old people? <laughs> oh, there's a few old people around, okay. We welcome the new people and uh, we welcome the old people as well. Um, uh, Stan, if you've traveled more than 30 kilometers to get here. Oh, oh, look at that table, oh my. I keep standing if it's more than 50 kilometers. Wow. Where are you from? Ham Hamilton gets points. Can we beat Hamilton? How can you beat Hamilton? Niagara Falls. Oh, Niagara Falls. Slowly I turn. Sir. Oshawa, that counts to Oshawa, Niagara Falls. I'm not sure. Traffic wise, I'm not sure either. That's a great. Uh, wave your hands if you went out for Halloween or celebrated Halloween or wore a Halloween costume. What'd you wear? I was Luigi. My son was Mario. Luigi. My nephew was Luigi. The whole family was Luigi. <laughs> the witch. Uh, how did I know that? Okay. <laughs> Halloween costume. At the Yes. Alexander Hamilton. Uh, <laughs> Alexander Hamilton. No, I'm not going to do the rap. But I think it was, I think it was the uh, costume of choice this year, next to Donald Trump. Uh, we'll move on. Any costumes here? No costume. Yeah, what'd you wear? Oh. Oh my goodness, Norse mythology. Mario Norse mythology. Wow. Uh, let's see, let's just do a couple more. Who's here? Uh, Stan, or just curious, a clap if you watch Coronation Street. <laughs> Mary, we've got some fans. Did you watch it last night? Uh, I don't even want to talk about it because I want to know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, got in that crash and I don't know if Lily got <gasps> Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> I, I put the pillow over my head because of that crash. Oh. It's a good one tonight. Okay. Does David Platt live is the question of the day. Okay, and let's just do, um, anybody watch CNN in the last week? <laughs> you turn to, Corona turn to Coronation Street, it's a little bit better. Who had a bagel so far for breakfast here? We're not taking inventory, relax. <laughs> that, that's great. And um, who's happy to be here? Yay, thank you very much. So that's who's in the room. I hope you get to know some friends. I hope you're sitting beside somebody you know and somebody new. Uh, I'm just going to introduce today. Um, I'm Larry Swartz, and I'm, I'm the author of uh, Drama Themes, fourth edition. And this is a great book. So to start off the day, I always want to talk about books. And that could carry us through the morning. But this is a great book. Uh, the star at the beginning of the uh, school year, September, talked about a love of books and the age of smartphones. How, what we call leisure reading, uh, the percentages are going down at different grade levels. And then there was a sentence who had my name on it. The campaign is urging faculties of education to equip future teachers with the ability to be effective reading promoters which includes familiarity with children's and especially Canadian children's literature. That's my job. <laughs> I uh, walk in, I, I have this thing of, in my classes, I just finished teaching at Brock University, but first where we look at literature every week. So they know that I'm going to talk about books and if they go with one of those books into their careers and their practicums, I'm very happy. Um, so we're going to do a little activity to talk about books. Uh, there's a, a handout in your package that comes from a great book. Uh, th um, this is a great book. Um, if you were here last year, it's similar, but I want to do it a different activity. These are two. It's the one that looks like this. There's a bookshelf. 
And there's a survey. The survey is to find out about a different reading interest. Would you rather subscribe to a magazine, buy a novel, or borrow a book from the school or community library? Oh, that was the activity we did that last year, but I wanted you to have a copy of it. But let's just talk about books for a few minutes before we start the day. Uh, my great book, Bookshelf, uh, is an activity I did in my children's literature class to start the year uh, of looking at children's literature. And what are the books from your life? that have informed you, that have stretched you, that have challenged you? What are your desert island books that would be on this bookshelf? So we actually did that activity, so at the risk of not being not repetitive, I'm just going to ask you to write. You can write on this sheet or you can write on a piece of paper. We're going to do three titles of books. Ready? Number, we take a pen and pencil. If you want to use this, that's fine. If you want to save it for a reproducible. But one of the bookshelves is, and if you don't have an answer, just leave it blank. It's not a test. Number one, what's on your bedside table? What are you reading on uh, the bedside table or your end table, coffee table, desk? What's currently a book of choice? Number two, a piece of children's literature that you've met this year. Again, if you don't have one, you can go back a year or two years. But a picture book, a novel, a poetry anthology that you've met that uh, maybe you've shared with students or you want to use in your career. So children's literature. And we'll just do one more. And you can dig into your... Uh, it could be the last year, the last few months, a professional title, a professional title that has informed you, stretched you, or perhaps it's on your table and you want to read it and get to it. What's a book that has formed you in your own teaching uh, experiences? And it could be an article, it could be a magazine, it could be online. And this is the interactive part. For three minutes, you get to share with people at your table what you wrote. And if you didn't write one, just uh, listen to what your friends have to say. Go. Thank you. Well, this conversation could take us to lunchtime because Larry loves talking books. But we're just going to wrap this up in a few minutes. Let's hear what's on your bedside table. Somebody give us a title. Nobody's reading anything. <laughs> Leaders of their own learning. So that's a professional book as well. So you get two for one there. As well. and who's the, do you know the author? Um, Thank you. Yeah. It's a fabulous book. Highly recommend it. Leaders of their own. We should just put post all these. There's an idea, Mary. Okay. Leaders of their own learning. Anybody else? What's on your uh, desk or bedside table? Anybody? Yes. <coughs> Innovators and, oh my God, leaders and innovators, and they're all at the back table. <laughs> uh, crime? I just, uh, national crime. National crime, as opposed to international yes. crime. <laughs> That's good. And uh, I'm just, how did you come to choose that book? Or? Um, I, I saw it in one of the teacher magazines, and it's all about residential schools. So wow. the history of residential schools. And so for various reasons. Yeah, uh, interesting. So an assumption when you talk about national crime, I didn't, you know, I was thinking of the genre of uh, Mr. So I needed that explanation from you. And hooray for teachers' journals for promoting that. Interesting about international crime about residential schools as well. And national. And what is what book is on your bedside table? <laughs> Anything to do with pregnancy. Anything to do with pregnancy. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Anything. Okay, children's literature. Anybody? Title? Yes. The Incredible Book Eating Boy. Great title. Boy and Book Eating. Anybody else? A title? Title? Yes. Yes, tell us about that. Or um, so red is, a, is about a crayon that's blue. It's a blue crayon that's labeled red. Um, he wants to be um, red so badly. Sorry, it's a blue crayon. R-E-D, yeah. Yeah, he can only draw blue, and it's a great book to yeah, it's a great book about special needs learners uh, mixing with the community. Read by Michael. Okay, and with a crayon popularity, that book's a nice uh, uh, 
connection to it. And over here we talked about Wonder. I'm on a mission to get every teacher in Ontario reading Wonder. It's a great book about empathy. It's on her bedside table. Uh, there's a unit in, oh, just, just mentioning it, there's a unit in drama themes about Wonder. It's going to be a movie as well. But a book about teaching empathy, and many teachers I find have read it aloud and kids have chosen that as their favorite. It's so popular that it's still in hardback in the North America. So it would generally be a read aloud, but, uh, and you don't have to read the whole novel to dig into the mind of this very special uh, boy, Augie Pullman. So Wonder, I'm glad was mentioned. And any other professional books that people want to, uh, yes? Okay, Gross Mindset by? Carol. Carol. We can Google. Dweck. Okay. And so uh, how did you come to that book? Oh, great, great. And so what she happened to be talking to us about the growth mindset, she showed us this nice little chart about a fixed versus, yeah. versus, uh, versus the growth mindset. And I was just really interested in it, so I ended up buying the book. Great. Uh, her, I haven't finished it, though, so. No, that's okay. Uh, yeah, we've got lots of unfinished books in our pose. Hooray for professors who promote good books. That's good. Um, so uh, thank you for sharing that. And just think about, uh, to start the day, thinking about great books. I brought a few in of my favorites. I went to my office yesterday. I'm just going to give you a, a one-minute book talk. I do have a website, LarrySwartz.ca, and each month I post uh, 10 recommendations. Yesterday I just posted Fall Into Books, so it's 2016 novel titles. So the what titles I'm mentioning here are on my website, which that you're welcome to uh, look at. Um, there's always, a, among uh, children's literature uh, aficionados, what's going to win the Newbery Award. And just because it wins an award doesn't make it a great book. But Sarah Pennypacker's Pax has been on the New York Times bestseller list, and it's a fantastic read. Wartime, a fox and a boy are separated during war wartime. The boy tries to connect with the fox, and the fox tries to connect with the boy. Uh, so that was a great read, because I love animal stories. And it's illustrated by John Clausen, who was an award winner as well. I really, I buy books about the bullying situation, and I loved Wolf Hollow. Uh, by Lauren Welk, um, and if, if you see it up front, you've got some glitter and gold in a tree there, and I just, I love this book because it deals with bullying in an, in an authentic way, and for me, if I had to vote right today, I'd probably choose this book. Give me a grade three, four, five classroom, and I would read The Wild Robot. Peter Brown is known for his uh, picture books, and this is his first um, uh, novel for young kids, and it's about a robot that is stranded on an island. So you learn about the environment, he connects to the animals, and uh, the it's a great read aloud. It, what makes it a great read aloud? Because there's lots of things to discuss, but the chapters are short enough, and, and as the plot unfolds, uh, you can learn and build empathy for this robot, and looks at the world of technology in an environmental situation. So those are three novels that I picked up. Um, Oh, I love talking about name stories, and some of you know Sherman Alexi, Thunderboy Jr., and he wants to find out about his identity. So this looks at FNMI culture, because Sherman Alexi tells a story about a boy who hates his name. Uh, he was named after his dad, Thunderboy Sr., and people call him Big Thunder. So this is a story about names, and it's a story about the culture, and he says, I'm going to tell you a secret. I hate my name. And the book invites text-to-text uh, -text connections by saying, tell us a story about your name, and do you like it? And if you could change it, what would it be? Uh, I brought in um, uh, uh, the newest in the trilogy, speaking of John Clausen, We Found a Hat. So you met, uh, the, the, these, uh, this is not my hat, and now we've got the, these two uh, turtles in the desert, and they look at a hat. I'm just going to give you, it's, it's told in three chapters, interesting. We found a hat. We found it together. But there is only one hat, and there is two of us. Get into groups and discuss. <laughs> what should they do with the hat? <laughs> told in three chapters, simple text, we found a hat. Uh, I bought this book because I bought, I like the author, but I bought this book because of the cover. And uh, 
It doesn't have the title on the cover. This is by Elaine Smith. You might know him from um, the, true, the, the, three, the True Story of the Three Little Pigs, was his first claim to fame as an illustrator. But this is about a penguin who has um, problems. And so why is this penguin different? The math people, how many penguins are on that cover? <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> a lot. That was a level two answer. <laughs> and I'm going to say, how do you know? <laughs> So this penguin, and I, I love this to activating prior experience. What do you know about penguins? And what do you learn about penguins uh, who, and uh, their identity? So that's why I bought that book. And the last one is Canadian. I'm on a committee. Um, many of you know the TD Book Awards. They're going to be announced on November 17th. And I had the privilege of being a juror for the um, uh, Picture Book Awards, the May Marilyn Bailey Picture Book Prize, is a $20,000 prize. I can't tell you which one's going to win. I'm not allowed to. And, but, and the, the five uh, finalists are posted on the website. But this uh, little gem was uh, discussed in, a, um, in the committee. It is one of the five finalists. Sometimes I Feel Like a Fox by Daniel Danielle. A small book, beautiful end pages there. I'm just going to give you a taste of it and see where your mind swims with this little book. Uh, what animal would you be? There's a little drama activity that we do. If you could be an animal, what animal would you be? And we meet the character there with a heart on her chest. Sometimes I feel like a fox by Danielle Danielle. Sometimes I feel like a bear, strong and confident. I stand tall and growl and protect those around me. Sometimes I feel like a deer, sensitive and kind. I listen to the sounds in the distance and prance through the forest. And sometimes I feel like a butterfly, delicate and free. I spread my wings wide open and flutter from leaf to leaf. And sometimes I feel like a moose. Give me two words to describe a moose. Big. Give me one word. Big. Round. Ugly. Ugly. That's a judgment thing, but that's okay. <laughs> Vegetarian. There you go. Vegetarian. Awkward and graceful are the author's choice of words. Uh, I move swiftly and silently with a gentle strength and wisdom. A great book for pattern writing is something that intrigued me. Sometimes I feel like I've put two adjectives and give me a sentence, and the kids have written a poem. But going further, the, you can see that the art, I hope you can see it from a distance, they're almost mask-like. So the art teacher in me wants to make Max. The drama teacher wants to invite them to move and sound like an animal. The science teacher wants to build an inquiry. What do you know about those animals? Uh, and the poetry teacher might invite them to write poems. And the bonus of this book, just to give you the, sometimes I feel like a fox, sly and sharp. I observe all those around me, and I disappear quickly. And the bonus of this book, at the end, we get a spread of the 12 characters that are in this book. And each of those animals has a totem meaning. So she's an Aboriginal artist and author. And here are the meanings. There's a bear, a deer, a beaver, a butterfly, a moose, an owl, rabbit, turtle, wolf, porcupine, raven, fox. I'm going to invite you in your head to think about which animal of those 12 would you be. A bear, a deer, a beaver, a butterfly, a moose, owl, Rabbit, turtle, wolf, porcupine, raven, or fox. And here are the totem explanations. A bear is brave. A deer, put up your hands, deer, any deer in the room? Loving. You're the only loving person in this room. <laughs> Can you change your answer? Any beavers in the room? There's a question you don't ask every day. Beaver. <laughs> is determined. Kathy, what animal were you? A deer. You are loving, so we have a friend there. Of course, Kathy's loving. A butterfly is vulnerable. A moose is strong. An owl is wise. Rabbit, creative. Turtle, patient. Wolf, loyal. Porcupine, curious. Raven, truthful. And Fox is clever. Sometimes I, you want to change your animal. Ron, what animal were you, Ron? A turtle. <laughs> You're a patient. Is that true? No. 
The book's called Sometimes I Feel Like a Fox, Opportunities to Carry It Further in the Classroom.